save 10% with my code Bobby10. Just kidding, guys. Today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, Jordan Peterson has outdone himself yet again, pure intellectualism with his commentary on Islam. Today, we're going to react to his podcast with Konstantin Kissin and the counter woke revolution. So if this is the very first time for you seeing my face over here, no, I haven't been a Muslim all my life. Quite the opposite. Let me double check. Yep, it has been exactly two weeks. So prior to that, 35 years, I have been a Christian, an Orthodox Christian to be precise. And after dissecting both ideologies carefully for multiple years, I finally submitted my will to God and became a Muslim. Thank God. So we all know very well that John Peterson spent multiple years of his life studying Christianity and looking into Islam. He had a fair shot. So I'm very curious to see to what conclusion he came. With no further ado, let's have a look. Right. Okay, so let's not make it... Okay, so let's agree that you shouldn't subordinate yourself arbitrarily to a rigid structure. Now, you might want to do that sporadically to discipline yourself. Mm -hmm. Right, but the, the object shouldn't be sub submission. Now, the, what's weird in, in the biblical narrative. Okay, this sentence alone explains why Jordan Peterson cannot give you a straightforward answer on the question if he believes in God. What do you mean do? What do you mean you? What do you mean believe? And what do you mean God? So he already tells you that you do not have to submit yourself to a rigid belief system just occasionally to discipline yourself. Guys, I come from a bodybuilding background. If I would occasionally discipline myself, I wouldn't build the body that I have. If you want to be a bodybuilder, you would have to submit yourself 100% to bodybuilding. And of course, the same even more so applies to God. God. How can we sporadically submit ourselves to a rigid belief system? That doesn't make any sense. You know, is that the, the goal is not submission. It's so weird. It's covenantal relationship. Oh, okay. And covenantal relationship is actually relationship. So one of the things you see with Moses, for example, and you also see this with Abraham, is that they're constantly negotiating with God. 
<laughs> and that's why my, the name of my next book, by the way, is... Yeah, Being that's absolutely fantastic. God. So if you look into the Jewish theology, yes, that is correct. They're arguing with God and there is an instance where the Jews even won an argument with God. But how can that be? What kind of pathetic God would this be? Where you, a mere creature, a mere human being, can outsmart God, your God, your creator. Listen to this. I'm a father. My son is two years old. He he cannot outsmart me if he goes to the candy drawer as if I do not know that. He cannot outsmart me. He's two years old. And this is just in a human context. Think about yourself, a mere creature made out of flesh. And then God, the absolute transcendence, the ultimate intelligence. How can you debate and discuss with that force? Of course you cannot. It is absolutely pathetic to think so. But however, it truly crystallizes Jordan Peterson's mindset here because it shows us how in love he is with his own intellect, with his own ego. He truly believes that he doesn't have to submit. Why would you have to submit to God, right? Why would I? I'm going to argue and debate with him. This points out beautifully that he cannot get into a state of peace because he is always reliant upon himself. He simply wants to make himself God, don't you see? It's an negotiation wow. it's not a submission and so oh. god is always threatening to wipe out the israelites in the desert he's just okay. sick and tired of their idol worship and their whiny resentment and their bitterness and their worship of the past tyranny and he's constantly threatening just to wipe them out and start again yeah and that's the apocalypse i suppose and Moses is constantly interceding on their behalf and telling god he shouldn't break his word and the odd thing in the story is that god actually listens which is rather preposterous but but the reason that's happening <laughs> is to mitigate again so there you have it you yourself agree that it is preposterous and it absolutely is in islam we talk about the fitra the natural predisposition of man the primordial state of man in which he knows right from wrong in which he knows that there is only one god worth submitting to everybody that has one percent of that fitra left knows intuitively that this is absolutely ridiculous why would moses somebody that was sent by god debate with god it doesn't make sense that's exactly the problem that you described which is to have the relationship with the wow. transcendent degenerate into nothing but a blind obedience and then the danger of that is well a blind obedience to who and I, I see this as a threat in islam in the more fundamentalist forms of islam it's like well you should submit to ella it's like hey fair enough ella Allah as interpreted by who? Oh, uh, totalitarian misogynistic mullahs. How about no? I, I don't buy your Allah, and what I don't point? see who made you the, the right precise. And even if I believe it, it's big so first and foremost, Jordan Peterson talks about blind obedience, but blind obedience was not the reason why I found myself becoming a Muslim in the first place. Quite the opposite. If you open up the Quran, you will see that the Quran is asking the reader to ponder, to reflect, to ask questions, to seek further knowledge. It is not about shutting off your brain, but quite the opposite, using your God-given intellect to see the truth yourself. So no, Islam is not only about blind obedience. Of course, there are certain commands by God that you would have to carry out. This is the same thing in every religion, of course, and this constitutes a religion. Even if you are not religious whatsoever, there are certain rules that you obey. If you look at the American Constitution or you look at human rights or what not, there is always a law in place that you obey based upon what you find reasonable or maybe you're just scared of the law, you're scared of the repercussions and therefore you obey it blindly. Yet again, religion is here to give us an external standard outside of ourselves, And this should appeal to you, Jordan Peterson, because you're talking about counter-wokeism. What is wokeism ultimately? It is worshipping your own desires. This is really what it boils down to. As long as it feels good, we can pursue it. Hey, today I feel like a girl. Tomorrow I feel like a tile. Who cares? I want to pursue it because it feels good. Identify myself as a teddy bear. But religion presupposes 
supposes that there are divine laws and only if we follow those divine spiritual laws we will lead a good life. Very similar to physical laws, just transcendent of it of course. If you look at gravity, even if you do not fully understand it, you submit yourself to the laws of gravity and you do not jump off a building. Because if you do, the consequence would be highly likely certain death. So you do not do that. And it's the same with religious laws. You reason yourself into it at first, or at least you should, and then when you accept it, you can submit yourself to it. Yet again, just like a workout regimen, at first I would have to see the data, for example. Hmm, does it really bring positive outcomes when people go to the gym and follow a healthy diet? I see enough evidence for this. Okay, now I'm going to submit myself to fitness. Now I'm going to eat six meals a day of rice and chicken and I'm going to work out religiously. Don't you understand? But to give him the benefit of the doubt, I do understand the authoritarian problem here that he doesn't want to submit his will to certain movements. Us. I understand that, but this is up to you again to filter out the information. Nobody tells you that you have to submit to a mullah. This is not Hinduism where you have to submit yourself to a guru. You have to learn yourself. You will have to see in the end right from wrong. The guy in the sky, I'm not sure I need a middleman to talk to him. Right? Well, that makes you a good Protestant. You know? <laughs> well, maybe but, but that's look, what we, I can, we can do. Well, we could also... Yeah, or rather a good Muslim, because in Islam we don't have a pope, we don't have clergy, we don't have anybody that stands between us and God. Moreover, we don't have any saints or we don't pray to Jesus or Mother Mary in order to have a connection to God. Well, we could also go down that rabbit hole a little bit, you know, and it's worth it, because I also think this is how we ended up in this postmodern mm. excess liberal conundrum. So... Jung talked about Catholicism, as we mentioned, and he talked about the utility of the and mercy of the confessional and that possibility of atonement. But he also laid out, you know, the dangers of that. The dangers of the Catholic structure is, uh, what would you say, a tilt towards authoritarian rigidity, sure. which is what the Protestants rebelled against. That's why, as a former Orthodox, I never resonated with the Catholic structure because we do not believe that one man holds all the authority, that a man can be the vicar of Christ. But then the question is, well, what's the danger of the Protestant revolution? And the danger is that everybody becomes his own church. Exactly right. And then here's the problem. You tell me what you think about this. Here's the logical conclusion of that. You're your own church. Yep. You're your own God. Yep. Now you can say what God said to Moses out of the depths of the burning bush. You can say, I am what I am. And I would say that's what the identity politics types do. They say, look, I am so superordinate in my own self-defining identity that no matter what identity claim I put forward, sure. It is incumbent upon you to accept it as if it comes from an omniscient source. Exactly right. And with this, you're debunking yourself, not only the Protestants, because you yourself, as I said, cannot answer the question if a God exists. And moreover, you cannot confirm that the revelation, the Bible is truly the revelation of God. You find it preposterous when you analyze it yourself. God actually listens, which is rather preposterous, but... And therefore, you make the outrageous claim that you can submit yourself to it partially just to discipline yourself. Don't you see what you're doing here? You're using religion to your own little benefit. Hmm, I'm disciplining myself. Which means your motivation is the opposite of selflessness. It comes from the self. And therefore, hence, you become your own god. And I think, like, I, as far as I can tell, Constantine, that's where we are. Right, Incre increasingly by force of law. If you, you too, make an identity claim, no matter how preposterous, which implies that there's some limit to identity claims, by the way. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. This is a podcast and it is one hour and 20 minutes long. Definitely worthwhile listening to and dissecting the psychology of a Jordan Peterson. However, even this short clip here already explains all that we need to know. This is why this man is suffering. Muhammad Hijab analyzed him Islamically. He gave him a psychological evaluation and told him what the reason is that he is depressed. From the Quranic paradigm, this will not be enough. Meaning, based on your current paradigm, according to the Islamic diagnosis, you will be depressed. 
Why? Because your purpose is not strong enough. Which is truly what it boils down to because I am really questioning how can you commit your whole life writing books about the Bible, essentially a tefsir on the Bible, what it could potentially mean, philosophical excursions into the stories, the mythical stories of the Bible, but you do not even believe in God as your creator, as somebody worth submitting to. You are still wrestling with God. Indeed, because you bought into the ideology that you can outsmart, outwit God, that you can debate and wrestle with him. Don't you understand that this is the root issue, John Peterson, of your suffering? Only if we submit ourselves fully to the will of God, only if we accept the isness of this world, the way that it is, can we find peace. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.